peace be with you. My dear friends, it's with great joy and hearts filled with thanksgiving that we gather in this magnificent cathedral to celebrate the installation of the 10th Bishop of Manchester, Bishop Peter Lubash. It is a joy to have Cardinal Deacon, so many archbishops, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, knights and ladies, faithful from throughout the diocese, here for this wonderful, wonderful occasion. We are particularly delighted to welcome for the first time uh, our new nuncio, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, who is representing the Holy Father, and it is a great joy to have you here. Welcome to you.
this time, I would like to thank Bishop John McCormick for his service as ninth Bishop of Manchester and more recently as Apostolic Administrator.
our beloved bishops, my brother priests, our deacons, religious men and women, our seminarians preparing to answer the call of God, to our brothers and sisters in the faith sharing with us this day. Tradition has chosen to celebrate her birth, Mary's birth, on September 8th, and today, counting backwards nine months, the Church honors that life that began to stir, not only within her mother's womb, but began to enliven all creation into a new hope, a new beginning, a new dawn of realizing God's presence in the world. God's presence in the lives of his Mary, the woman betrothed to a man named Joseph. Mary, the woman most holy, the mention of whose name immediately brings to mind the image of her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary is conceived. And we hold and teach and maintain that apart from all other human beings, she who was to be the mother of the Savior was conceived without original sin, was preserved from that original sin by which every human being suffers want, that sin which distrusts God's grace. Why did God tell you not to do this? That sin which grants 
grasps at equality with God, that sin which reveals its dreadful consequences only when it is too late. That sin which leads to the blaming of others and even blaming God, it was that woman you gave me. That sin which divides and pits one another against each other and leads to the degradation of the very person who was created in God's image. It was from this, from all this, that Mary was preserved in her immaculate conception. Now the gospel passage we heard today demonstrates the fruit of this singular gift to this singular woman. Upon her encounter with the angel, Mary does not doubt God's motives. She doubts instead her own preparedness to respond adequately to God's plan. Mary does not grasp at equality with God. She accepts instead a place of service. I am the handmaid of the Lord, she says. Preserved from original sin, Mary does not follow the example of Adam or Eve in their confusion and blame and divisiveness. Instead, she says, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you say. And immediately, a companionship between Mary and Almighty God a companionship between heaven and earth is begun so that the angel's brief presence now gives way to the abiding divine presence as the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. On this day, this holy day, the local church in Manchester welcomes its 10th bishop. On this day when the whole church recalls God's invitation to life, on this day when the whole church give, gives thanks to God for the unyielding hope of the elderly Joachim and Anna, on this day when the whole church welcomes the news of the vindication of their hope, this day, when the church sings the praises of the child born to Joachim and Anna, and sees Mary bring forth the new generation of faith, on this day, made holy by God's ineffable love for us all, and Mary's enormous leap of faith. This most holy day, this new bishop, who, it must never be forgotten, is Flo and Bill the Bash's kid. <laughs> Flo and Bill had five kids, and among them is five, I'm the middle. <laughs> and they taught and they showed and they called us to the faith that had been handed on to them on this day this new vision who comes to you now begs you to join me in asking God for mercy that God may give his unworthy minister grace to sing together with him, to sing together with all the church in Manchester the eternal praises of God. This new bishop who comes to you now asks you to allow the stirrings of God's grace to breathe new life into all of us.
together so that this faith that has been the source of hope and love in this diocese for so many generations, cherished by those who built these communities of faith. This faith can be entrusted whole and entire to a new young generation eager to engage in that divine companionship that enabled Mary to say yes to God and to sing that ancient hymn of joy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession may we be delivered from all our faults, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace, and a model of holiness. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. <laughs>
Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
We hope you continue to make all these good things, O oh Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.